What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Buying Into the Hype so that you don't have to with your host with not a lot of money left in his wallet, Lionel, aka Joshua Spenwell. Today, I'm going to be looking at the GRL FPV Pro 2 Titanium, gosh, that is a long name, by Gravity Loss FPV. It is one of the more premium frames on the market today and it has been gaining popularity recently as the next frame to buy. And if you're shopping for one, then this could be for you. This is just gonna be a quick first impressions because this is not a review. Um, I believe that a review of a frame has to come with the long term ownership of the frame. So I'm just gonna quickly just go over what the frame is, uh, things that you might want to look out for, and also, you know, if you're interested, I'm leaving affiliate links down below. Not mine, of course, these are for pilots that I actually believe that could deserve it. So if you do buy it, a little commission goes to them. Just a disclaimer, so disclaimer, this was not given to me uh, to review by GRL, but they did hook me up with a nice discount. So yeah, thank you. Um, so let's get into it, let's go. All right, let's do a quick overview of the frame. Uh, the frame comes fully assembled, almost, and you just need to attach the arms. The plus side of this is that you save time building this, putting this thing together, uh, but I did not like that they didn't include any additional hardware. This becomes a problem later on, and I'll explain why. The first thing that stands out is the build quality. Okay, the carbon fiber, according to GR GRL, is aviation grade, and it shows everything is shiny and smooth with no rough edges at all. Um, it actually feels really, really nice in the hand. It feels really stiff as well. Um, compared to the other frames, um, like for example, if you build an Apex, you can see the comparison of the types of arm. Uh, also notice that the Apex arms are much thicker compared to this one, it's really sleek and nice. Uh, but apparently this is super strong. Like you could see people actually standing on this thing like, and it doesn't even flex. Uh, another thing to note that I got the titanium, titanium version. So the bottom plate is titanium. It's really nice. I would really hate to get mud stuck in here. Machined titanium. So you have like everything else machined. Really, really lovely. Uh, I think the standoffs are aluminum alloy, right? The standoffs are made from aluminum alloy. These, there are four of them. Sorry, there are eight of them. And including this thing, the bottom, the bottom, the chin plate, I guess. I guess this is also aluminum. The arms can fit 16 to 19 millimeter motors, um, but I wish that there was more motor protection. You see how small this thing is? Like this compared to, let's say the Apex, it's a, a bit bigger. And the problem is, is like I'm running 25 mm bells and those things are quite large and I, I worry about motor protection because if this is gonna be a bando basher, right? I think the first thing with dive is the, the motors when they hit something on impact. The top plate comes with a battery strap, right? Although I wish there was an option for Velcro or the sticky pad instead, they just included that they, it's really stuck on already, so you really can't can't change it. Um, I will get rid of this. I think I, I, I because most of my batteries have the Velcro pads on them, so I will change this to a Velcro. I think it would be it would have been nice if they gave you the option of choosing between this pad or another kind of Velcro pad instead. The top plate. Notice here, the top plate has a nice little cutout here. Nice little cutout here so that you can run your battery lead out of here. Um, you will also notice later when I take it off that there's actually a space for a capacitor. So you probably want to run your ESC facing backwards. The funny thing is that, yes, there's a hole here, but it also included this TPU print, which I assume is for a uh, battery lead. So let's say you want to run your, your power, uh, your leads out this way from the side, then you can come out here instead. So they give you options, which is nice. Okay, so let's get the top plate off and we shall see what's inside. We are taking off the top plate. As you can see closer, there's a slot here, and then this is where the camera plate goes in the front. So first thing you notice on the inside, they do include this TPU over here. Uh, this is for an analog camera. Uh, it won't fit the vis Vista, but the thing is, is that if you take this thing out, try. you take this thing out, there's plenty of room for a Vista. They even included the 20 by 20 uh, mounting holes for your Vista. Maybe hard to see here, but the 20 by 20 mounting holes. And notice how shiny this thing is. Like it, it reflects the light of my of my light so badly. 
All right, and there's also plenty of room here for um, a air unit, so you can actually put the whole air unit like just here, fit it just nicely, like that. Okay. First thing to call out is that the the camera mount here is not a twenty by twenty, so you see there is quite a bit of space here and you probably need to fit uh, extra washers or something to hold the camera in place. Again, I wish that they had included hardware so that you could do this, but you need additional hardware of your own to fit the camera plate. In front, you will see there's a, this extra space for a capacitor. So if you run your ESC here and your leads come out here, you can put the capacitor close to the ESC, uh, the positive and negative of the ESC. And then when you mount the top plate, like so, then you have the space to run out the battery leads. But let me get to the biggest problem that I had with this frame, which is the stack. So as you can see here, the stack that I have right now configured is a 20 by 20. But what it comes with is actually a 30 by 30. Okay, the 30 by 30. And now it's fine if most of you run 30 by 30 stacks, right? You just plop it on, everything's good, all good. But I wanted to run a 20 by 20, well, that's, it's completely on me, you know, but I just wanted to see like what the extent of this frame was. And switching to the 20 by 20 was particularly difficult because you needed to take out all of this, the arms, the bottom plate, just to get to the to the mount. And, and, and the solution of getting a 20 by 20 stack in, I wasn't really happy with because I tried, you know, either putting, putting the screws right from the bottom all the way through to become the stack screws. And, and I didn't, that didn't sit well with me because probably the vibrations of the arm will go right to the stack. So I, I decided not to do so. So I settled for the solution where I had this TPU that is uh, screwed into this uh, countersunk, these screws are countersunk, which I'll, um, and, into this kind of TPU print that I had made so that I can run M2 screws into the stack. I, I wish that they included extra hardware and I also wish that they um, had some kind of instruction manual on how they would have done a 20 by 20 stack. Maybe including a TPU like this also would have helped, but I don't know. Um, to see what the creators want to update about. So yeah, this is my first impressions. First impressions of the gravity lost titanium frame. It's not a review. And even if it was, I have my biases because I think a frame is a frame, like this frame and this frame. But I don't think a frame would, would, would change the dynamic of how a quad flies because flight controller technology nowadays and all your component technology nowadays are so good that basically you can you can eliminate most, if not all, of the bad characteristics of a of a quadcopter with tuning. I believe that what makes a really good frame comes in its long-term use of the frame. And uh, for me, and what makes a good frame, and this should be for you as well, is one, accessibility. How easy is it to get in and out of a frame? Because I've seen, have had some frames that instead of you know just eight screws, you have to take out like you know, 20 screws. Maintainability, number two, maintainability. How easy is it to replace an arm or anything broken? How easy is it? Um, number three, availability. Uh, are the parts easily available? How easy, how easy is it to get something like replace? And last but not least, durability. Now this is a thing that this frame talks about. It's like, this is ultra stiff and ultra durable. Um, that is yet to be seen. Uh, and if it's, it is durable, as durable as it claims to be, then it negates all the top, the, the three uh, points before, the accessibility, maintainability, availability. Those does not matter anymore because you'll just never break it and then you just keep flying. Unfortunately, all of these, uh, criteria can only be access, assessed with long-term ownership of the quad because all of these components that go into the frame also affects the criteria above him. It's flight characteristics, of course. I don't want to mention anything about flight characteristics yet because I don't believe a frame alone would make up how a quad flies. Maybe I'm just not tuned attuned enough to, to feel that. But I think it's a right combination of everything. Uh, it could be the right components, the right tune, and the type of flying that you do. Like for example, if you prefer a frame that does like this, I guess, bando bashing, uh, you want to do cinematic, you do you know spang or, or freestyle, um, depends on what. I will be putting this frame together, all right? I'll be using some pretty crazy, or I wouldn't say crazy, but top end, uh, top end parts. I'll be using the Fur the new Farouk uh, Sabang motors, the 2505. Uh, I'll be using the this air unit because it can fit. And I shall be using the Fatec G4 to be mounting in that. And let's see how it goes. I hope you stay subscribed 
and maybe you'll see this thing in the air. All right, thanks. See you next time.